Hey everybody, Sean Keating here. I'd like to welcome you to this week's Dental Up podcast. We'd uh, like to welcome Bob Brandon. He's our general manager here at uh, Keating Dental Arts. Bob, how you doing? Great. Thanks for having me. <laughs> Good to see you, man. Um, you know, this week we're going to talk about implants and the best practices when it comes to implants. So a lot of dentists um, are taking up uh, placing implants right now or they're sending them out to maybe an oral surgeon. But uh, so we're going to talk about different ideas, what we see, what we recommend and how to make your life a little bit easier when you're working with a dental lab when it comes to implants. So first, I'd like to start off with some sports. Bob's a big sports guy. I know your uh, your little guys into soccer and all that. I'm not a big soccer guy, but oh well, no. But um, football. Did you watch a little bit of Pro Bowl yesterday? That thing was uh, boring, man. AFC NFC uh, kind of. I think the highlight was Ezekiel chasing a fan that ran onto the field. Yeah, that was crazy. I did see that. That <laughs> was uh, that was about it, though. <laughs> I know. It's like it's kind of crazy. You watch this game. I remember. I like it better with the format where it's the week before the Super Bowl instead yeah. of the week after. Yeah. I like it better in Hawaii. But it's like on the very first play, they, they have a run or whatever, and it goes, and everyone kind of just stands up, and <laughs> it's like they hug him. It's they like, want to hurt each other. the hell? <laughs> Freaking hit him. And the guys that are just, it's like, it's not even a real game. It's like patty cake, yeah. man. Yeah. It's like, and I know, yeah, the season's over, guy. You're going to get injured. You got eight months to rehab, you know? But uh, yeah. I think I read somewhere like, it's, if they paid the guys a reasonable amount, like, you know, their salary or yeah. something, they might play harder or, or maybe not. But I just don't think it's ever going to be a great draw if they're not going to be paying 100%. Yeah, it's a, play the it's game. a glorified all-star game. Yeah. You know, and it's just one step up from flag football, really. They don't want to really get hurt. Is. They don't want to hurt their friends. They don't want, yeah. you know, it's, it's, it is a big risk. you got to understand it from the owner's perspective, too. You, yeah. know, you don't want your key guys missing a lot of time That's because they're injured. Even like in baseball, you got some of the guys that sit out because they're in – you know, a race or whatever, and it's only halfway through right. with baseball, but they even kind of, but they still, you know, they can hit the ball as hard as they can and all that. I think I seen one play where one of the running backs, I forgot who it was, got really freaking nailed, and he got up all pissed, like, what are you doing? Yeah. You hit me. And it's like, well, it's about time it's for still freaking football hit, at you. the end of the day. It's still football. Uh, but it's just like, I'm just bumming thinking about, you know, another, I mean, it's great Super Bowl's coming up this week, but then after that, it's like, fuck, I mean, you got, yeah. what, you got baseball and basketball. I don't watch any of those. Yeah, sure. <laughs> I mean, it's not as exciting, but, you know, we got March Madness. I love yeah. I love college basketball, yeah. really, when it comes to, the, you know, March Madness. You see, you see kids playing for the love of the game and not for the money. Basketball, you know, Lakers. But a lot of your customers love your uh, March Madness pool. Oh, yeah. They, they, we sponsor a March Madness pool on Dental Town every year, and... So I think it's up to about five grand. Yeah, they like it for the money. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like, but it's always better when you're like, you got something to play for, I think. Mm -hmm. I would like it. It makes it a little more interesting. Even after, I think after we get, you know, all the people that are out of it, after, you know, 99% of the people are out of it when it's down to the last few yeah, days, the money we runs, do yeah. something where we add in, okay, give us the total score mm -hmm. of what it'll be. So you got a chance and, you know, we'll throw 500 bucks or something. Close to score the final, you know, or whatever, and so you got some hope of something. But um, what about? Uh, did you yeah. see in the horse race? That big horse race on Saturday. You know what? I, my unfortunately, my weekend was all little guy soccer. Unfortunately, <sighs> I, I missed everything this weekend. <laughs> uh, I talked about it last week on our podcast. I'm a big, not a big horse guy, but I like you know watching the favorites and betting mm -hmm. on the favorites and stuff like that. So they had the Pegasus. Which I thought it was in Dubai, Abu Dhabi or somewhere, but it was in Florida. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, so I went down to my little local place, Sammy's, and my oh, wife yeah. went with me. And, uh, you know, California Chrome is always, it, I bet on them every horse race, uh -huh. and I've won almost every race except like the last race. And uh, so this time I didn't bet them. I bet on Arrogate, and my wife bet on, you know, she put a little money down on uh -huh. California Chrome. Uh -huh. And I almost went California Chrome because I'm like, dude, <laughs> I really feel <laughs> this, he's going to come back and, you know, and, and win this race. And, uh, but then in my gut, you know, you bet with, you know, you're, mm -hmm. you know, kind of try to bet smart. So I went ahead and put the money on uh, Arrogate. 
And lo and behold, man, that damn awesome. horse went and smoked everyone. <laughs> I think California Chrome took like 10th. Oh, Just, <laughs> just horrible. And so now I hear, I guess there's a little knee issue. It might be a little chip in the knee. And Ooh. he's off to stud fees now. And I think he gets $40,000 a pop. Wow. Whatever. Well, hey. What a, what a good life. It's good money if you can <laughs> go have get sex and get 40 grand or, or to go mate with a horse, yeah. whatever you call it. <laughs> whatever. But, um, so thank you, Arrogant. I got a pocket full of money from you there, and uh, awesome. Yeah, it's kind of crazy. I just I've been really lucky, but I it's not real it's not real tough when you just kind of bet on the favorites. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, you know I'm not really good on you know trifectas or uh, you know exacta. Mm -hmm. You know those are tough. Yeah. And then you can do that sometimes when you box it. You know you can box say okay. You know, this horse and this horse, first or second, either way, but it costs you double the money. Sure. I don't think yeah. that as much, but other than that, you know, uh, what else do we have? Any other sports? You got signing day for uh, college football. That's Wednesday. Oh, so that's, okay. uh, that's like a national holiday for a lot of people. That's yeah. when... Uh, you know the the schools will get restocked for you know the years. To Alabama come. will get all the best players and all the other things. It's kind of yeah, crazy. It is crazy. And but. then Harbaugh and and Michigan. I mean, I just love every college game in football this year. If I could see Michigan, I would watch that because yeah. he's just a great coach. And those guys were nothing a year or two ago. And he's with a bunch of scrappy players and not a bunch of great recruits. No, he, uh, he's delivering a pretty damn good team and give them a couple years. I think with some good solid recruiting classes, mm -hmm. I think they're going to be up there in the one and twos every year, you know, just because he's a great coach. Yeah. But uh, got to beat Ohio State, though. you got to get past Ohio oh, State if you want that end result for Michigan. Can you believe that? That's just unbelievable. But yeah. So, yeah. Um, but uh, other than that, we uh, we had a pretty slow weekend when it came to sports, other than some horse racing and a little bit of NFL. But next year, next week's the Super Bowl. Who you like for yeah. the Super Bowl, Bob? Man, you know, I'm, my heart says Patriots, but I'm hoping the Falcons win. <laughs> yeah. You're a Boston guy. You you went up to you went to dental school up there a little bit for a few years back. In the I day, did, didn't you? but uh, <laughs> luckily when I was there, the Patriots were horrible, so you could actually the regular guy could actually get tickets and, and no go kidding. see a couple of games. And it was actually before they even moved into their new stadium, so oh, okay. it was at the old uh, I think it was called uh, Foxborough Fox Stadium. World. Yeah. What a trip. Yep. I remember we used to always go to the dental shows. It's called the Yankee Dental Convention. And actually, it's... It was last weekend. Yeah. It just yeah. went over last weekend. And we used to go there. And I used to love it because I just love eating lobster. <laughs> <laughs> Every day, lunch and dinner would be... You know, lobsters and shit. What was that scallops one place? And scallops and then yeah. uh, their chowder is so great. But oh, yeah. that one Durgan Park, we oh, always go there every gosh. year. And yeah. The waitresses are all like 90 <laughs> years old, 80 years old. Not that that's a problem with that, but these old ladies are coming. What do you want, mister? You know, it's like you're not like, ready right there, oh, man. You're you weren't not, ready. They would they flick you in your forehead. Go, hey, let's go. We got a lot of people here. And I remember she would bust our. Just on different things, like you want the Fred Flintstone, you know, they, they literally oh, yeah. is like a Fred Flintstone prime, prime rib, rib. <laughs> big bone, big thing, and uh, but good times, old uh, old Boston man. I'm, I kind of miss that. I don't miss the cold. I remember oh. every every year, Jeez. it's always like eight feet of snow on, yeah. on the roads and kind of neat. But um, talk about passionate people out there. I mean, you'd be in a pub at one in the morning, they're singing at the top of their oh, lungs at yeah. one and two, remember? And yeah. we're like, we got to be at the booth at eight o'clock <laughs> the next day. And we're like, oh, no. Uh, but, Celtics um, fans, the Red Sox fans, the Patriots fans, the Bruins fans. I mean, they're uh, all so passionate about they their They really teams, are. Yeah. And I remember just recently back in 08, 09 with the Lakers, because we're big Laker oh, guys, yeah. and the Boston Celtics. And I remember just the fans, the Lakers are leaving after the third quarter or whatever, just because it's they're down by 10, and these Boston mm. fans stick with you, Heckling and they're in them. your yeah. ear. They're the biggest hecklers. <laughs> I freaking love that. I mean, they just get into it where we're all, not we, I mean, I, I get into it, but a lot of our fans are just, oh, I'm going to go home and sit in, you know, in front of my 80-inch TV. Yeah. And they've just got so many options where it, those, I remember one year we were up like 20 some odd points and then this guy kept in the back of our heads and I was with our two sons, my wife, 
And I remember Kyle, my, our oldest son, was kept going, Dad, I'm going to punch this guy <laughs> if he keeps going on. And I goes, just let it relax. We're winning. And then the freaking Celtics came and beat us oh, at the end. Here's geez. my 20-year-old son oh. ready to throw down with <laughs> these Boston guys. And he just kept yapping oh. like, like a crow, like, rap, 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 rap. We got great seats, and this guy he couldn't do nothing. But, you know, I kind of shook his hand afterwards. Like, dude, you stuck with these yeah, guys. Absolutely. You kept after it. Good for yeah. you. So, kind of, kind of, you know. I wish our our fans had more passion like that. I know there is some fans, but anyways. So, okay, let's get that out. Let's talk a little dental. Um, Bob, you get a gazillion calls every day. You see a gazillion cases every day. You've been me day one here, but um, I just know with implants, it's it's one of our fast and growing fastest growing areas in our in our laboratory. And we have more and more of the GPs, the general practitioners, doing implants. Sometimes, you know, I, you know, these guys will take a weekend course, yeah. you know, and they'll learn how to pull a flat back and yeah. sink an implant in your head. And they got so they come back on Monday and they start doing it. And sometimes it's, you know, it's, yeah, it's so tough. Sometimes you got to call time out on these and, you know, you got to get back to basics. If, you know, if you want a predictable result, uh, you know, you got to use good systems. You have to have your systems in place for success. Um, a weekend course, you can learn a lot, but you know, unless you have you know good support from your manufacturer, still maintain the relationships with your surgeons, with you know, with your periodontist and with your oral surgeons, because not every case is going to be perfectly straightforward. I, I would say that you know, at least fifty percent of the cases. GPs are more than qualified to, to put in the implants, you know, but have, have good systems in place for planning. Know, know the anatomy that's in the area. Know what to look for ahead of time. And I would say the biggest, the, the biggest issue is try to have a restorative plan in place before you select the fixture because there are some systems that you know, offer you all options, but there are there are other systems, there are other manufacturers and other implant uh, styles that lock you out of certain restorative plans. Kind of like an open architecture of mm -hmm. uh, they shut it down where you have to use it. And what you're saying is some guys will just go to the top drawer of what they have in there and they'll put it in there sometimes. Yeah. And, and then that's you're keeping kinda... your fingers crossed, hoping yeah. for a great result. So, you know, but. But there are there are a number of, of great manufacturers available, and there's more and more coming um, into the U.S. every year, and it, it does it keeps the cost down. But luckily, uh, the more popular brands are uh, again they're becoming more cost effective. They're becoming more cost effective for us as a laboratory, but also for you guys as as the either the surgeon or the restorative doctor. Um, you know, we have a number of manufacturer-specific um, milling systems we can go with. We can go with Nobel, we can go with Strawman, we can go with 3i. Those are three very popular uh, manufacturer-specific milling centers that we utilize on a daily basis here at Keating. And, you know, for, for a lot of other systems, we're able to utilize Atlantis uh, components, which is, you know, it was been taken over by Astra, and now it's Densply. So they have a, a lot of options for you as well. Um, some of our more popular uh, restorative uh, methods to help keep the cost down, and I'm talking in the you know high twos to low threes, so it's still it's a very cost-effective restoration, um, is the, the Screw Retain Bruxer. Our Screw Retain KDZ Bruxer and our Screw Retain KDZ Bruxer Aesthetic those are selling from the high twos to the mid threes. And you get a manufacturer specific, what's called a titanium base, some, some vendors call it a universal base, where then we can design uh, the Bruxer crown on top of it and we'll loot it here in the laboratory for you. Um, if there are path of draw issues with proximal contacts, sometimes it's best to let you guys, you know, put in the base, put in the crown, adjust the contacts, and then you can take the universal base out of the patient's mouth put it back onto the model and you can cement it extra orally so there's there's never the issue of cement sepsis. Um, what about with a like, titanium base? Sometimes I, the doctor will want like a zirconia base. Is that just, is it asking for trouble? Or you can do it. Loading I, and loading on that? I or? think our, our preference here, you know, the, the, the cases that we see back for fracture um, 
And are not many, I think, but are, are not do. many, but <laughs> but you want a titanium to titanium connection because when you torque the screw down, you want to make sure that you have metal around the screw head for protection. The ones that we do see back that you know these these have been in the mouth you know three five seven years long time. Um, they're the ones, unfortunately, where you you have a zirconia to titanium interface, and and those are the ones that unfortunately we see back. Again, it's not many, but it is um, sometimes a bigger issue, and, and it, it's a pretty big inconvenience for your patient, and you know obviously for the doctor to to take that out and to to restore it in a more conventional method. What's the deal with? Remember going to natural dentition with implants you're not supposed to tie to that natural dentition supposedly because of the you know the movement and is that still you know the the last i heard um when i was at the koi center a couple of years ago that the research is the research is inconclusive on that and it's more of a um, practitioner uh, feel if you will um, and we do we we do restore a large number of cases where we're actually um, connecting an implant-based restoration to a natural tooth in you know a three and a bridge. Okay, so the person lost uh, you know the patient lost tooth number 19, then they lost number 18. Well, the surgeon goes ahead and puts an implant in the position of number 18, and you construct a three and a bridge from 18 to 20. It's a very very predictable That's, solution. I think I got that. Yeah, I think yeah, so. <laughs> That's Strawman we did it right. Life, yeah. Right. Oh, back yeah. in my day, it's we couldn't restore a tooth with you know single mom with six kids. Yeah, uh, it's called extractions. <laughs> <laughs> he extracts it for ten dollars or whatever. I don't even know the cost back then, but yeah. Then so we put an implant bridge there. It's Strawman. Mm -hmm. Strawman's pretty big time. Pretty good. Kind of one of more expensive for the dentist. Is it kind of higher they, up? But well, they they are. Are, are they but coming around in their prices? They are for abs absolutely. Yeah, um, the restorative components. You know, for us, used to be very high. Um, they are coming down. The Strawman Strawman Milling Center. It's in Arlington, Texas. Uh, we get some great products from them. Really? Yeah, we're getting we're getting phenomenal. Um, you know, custom abutments. We're getting, you know, the the the. It's called a vario base, so that universal base or that tie base I was talking about earlier. We get uh, great parts, you know, from them for that. And that's like open architecture you use with other products. You can, yeah. So if if you had not a, that you want it. I mean, it's kind of like a doctor with his impression material. Okay, I got this body from you know, Kerr, and then I got this watch from you know, 3M. And why mix and match? Well, I got this for. 50 cents cheap. I mean, some dentists, it's like, don't mix and match. Right. You know, if you're going to use a system, use what they recommend, what their R&D went through and all that, instead of trying to be your little MacGyver yeah. of saving time and or money when you kind of going to lose your at butt. At the end of the day, at, at, at the end of the day, I honestly believe you're going to get a more precise fit if you're using manufacturer specific parts. You know, and, and we do, there are a lot of, I, I hate to use the word knockoff, but there's a lot of more cost-effective brands on the market that are sort of copies of some of these, um, you know, more tried systems that yeah, have been in absolutely. place for a number of years. And you can often get you can often get good results with that. And I'm not saying to, to abandon more like that. It's like screws. Isn't there separate screws yeah. you can use that are, aren't? The eighty dollars screw, we can get them for twenty, or you know, just different yeah, things absolutely. like that. But then again, torquing and regulations on how has that been ISO nine thousand spec, and is it FDA approved type thing? Don't those those are available, yeah. And and the FDA is a big issue um, in our industry on the implant side, yeah. definitely. And that's why we we really mm -hmm. made the switch probably three years ago to uh, maintain the manufacturer specific parts. Yeah, that's and good because we were getting told, just use this and use this when we shouldn't really we gotta just say, hey, we gotta do it by the book. Yeah. Okay, especially when we guarantee everything. You right. Know? We don't charge for remakes and so when we start a case it's we marry that case. So. Absolutely. You know the warranty you know, with us is huge and you know we're we're gonna back that up every day. And if there's an issue we're gonna help we're gonna help you, the doctor, and we're gonna we're gonna be there for your patient at the end of the day. What about when you it seems like we get a lot of calls when they're taking the impression, like 
it's an open tray, is it closed tray? Why do we get doctors, and some of these guys are big time guru type guys, and they just they cut a corner here and there, yeah. and it's like, dude, no, please. I would, I would say the first thing is no triple trays. That's going to distort the vertical relationship on there. And and we do see some triple trays. And unless what about you're taking, if the triple tray is taken just for the impression itself? And then, you know, you got the opposing, but you take a separate opposing and a bite. No. You can, you, well, you can, you can still take. But the trays kind of rigid or, or it's not rigid or. Yeah. So if, if you have the healing cap on and you want to take a triple tray for the opposing and give us an idea of, you know, the adjacent um, dentition on the working side. Yeah, that's fine. Absolutely. No problem with that. But once you uncover the fixture and put in the impression post or impression coping, um, I would say no, no triple trays at that stage. Okay. Um, if, if the patient's already come back from the surgeon or if you already have the abutment in place and you're treating it like a natural tooth, almost like a natural tooth abutment where you isolate the margin, you know, pack cord or trim it with a laser, um, fine. Again, triple tray generally will work out okay. But if you're at the fixture level and you're using a metal impression coping or post, um, no triple trays. And uh, we've unfortunately learned that um, pouring these models up, the vertical relationship, it's going to look fine on the model. Everything always looks fine on the model. But when you transfer it to the mouth, oftentimes the vertical relationship is, is um, disturbed. And the, the margin height of the abutment that we construct for you is going to be off. The proximal contacts are going to be off and the occlusion is going to be off. Um, so I recommend if it's single units or uh, two single units adjacent that are not going to be connected, closed tray is fine. Okay. No, no problem there. Um, some of the general rules on closed tray are use as much heavy body or, or a high viscosity material as possible because you're not capturing margins. Um, use it on the proximal contact surface, use it on the occlusal of the adjacent teeth. Um, what material do you like for impressions for smaller stuff? I mean, what's your, you know, I'm an Impergum guy. Yeah, what's I, yours? you know what, again, Impergum gives us the most accurate. Um, you know, the, the 3M imprint material is also very good. It's an imprint um, two now? Or I think is it's, it, yeah, yeah imprint I think it's imprint It's two. their polyvinyl. Correct. You know, you know, but damn 3M, man, they just, it's a little more expensive, but... In the end of the day, when it comes to consistency and, and getting that accuracy, why why cut corners? But right. a lot of guys do. Yeah. You know I mean, I think we always did back in the day. If we didn't have the money, you know, same thing with clothes. You gotta you gotta buy from Zodis mm -hmm. or you know or mm -hmm. Kmart. You can't go to Nordstrom's to get your good shirts, you know, till you get older, wiser, and right. more money. And you've but, learned from a couple mistakes along the way. <laughs> you learned that. The Shirts <laughs> last about three months, and where the other ones last All a the year. Buttons are falling off. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. Um, so, yeah. what about with on your open tray? Explain exactly the open tray and closed tray, and and the different. Um, so with with an open tray impression, you've got to you know you or we will drill the holes on the occlusal table, perforate the tray for you, so the pin will be exposed. Um, that open tray impression coping stays within. The, uh, the impression throughout the entirety of the period. It's, it's, it's in the impression coping is in the impression in your patient's mouth. It's in the impression while it's in transit to us. And it's in the impression uh, while we're fabricating your implant cast. So there's literally, there should be no, no variation. There should be no distortion and it should be 100% accurate. Um, we know that not to be 100% true, but that's in theory. Um, closed tray, however, is you put the impression coping in, seat the tray with the material, let that set. Um, after it's fully set, you remove it, the impression coping will stay attached to the fixture in your patient's mouth. You'll unscrew it, put it in a little sterilization bag, you know, indicate, you know, uh, um, Oh, yeah. An indicator line, you know, even a Sharpie pen for us is, is great. Just, you know, which side is buckle, you know, just something simple like that. A lot of, a lot of doctors will take a burr and score the buckle side for us. Yep. Yeah. Um, that way, it just gives us another landmark to line up because we're going to have to attach a laboratory analog to your impression coping, reinsert it back into 
uh, your impression and then fabricate the cast. So again, there are two potential sources of error and that's, you know, that one is in the office and one is here in the laboratory. Um, luckily, most impression uh, copings, close strain impression copings, have sufficient vertical height and have sufficient uh, retentive surfaces that you know we're using we're using loops and we're using a scope when we're assembling them out on the lab floor prior to going into the model room, um, and you know we're we're obviously we're we're being as careful as we can. Um, most good brands of uh, implant impression copings we're able to tell we're able to orient no problem. Um, you know some of the other ones where you have insufficient vertical height or they're mostly cylindrical, or they only have maybe one retentive surface for us to align into your impression, um, those can be a little tricky. So if you're visually inspecting your impression coping and you know, oh, it's, this is just, it's, it's like a pencil and I, and I don't know which way it's gonna go back in, just kind of think about what we have to go through yeah. at the next step to make your cast accurate. And if you just give us a heads up, hey, I drew a black Sharpie line on the buckle, you know, that way Steve, Manny, or I, when we get it here in the laboratory the next day, we'll know how to align it properly. Um, again, more, more information for us is always better. Um, you know, we get lab slips with, with nothing on them. It'll say tooth number 30, A2. You know, just give us, give us a little bit of something yeah. to go by. <laughs> exactly. I mean, usually it's anteriors and, you know, they have nothing, no study model. Right. And it's just like A3. And it's like... Well, dude, where's my, you know, mm -hmm. where's my study model? We're just going to make it beautiful and natural, but more information is better. Now, yeah. when you're sitting on those trays, closed and open tray, is your trays already built and made that way that they can buy that's already set up and ready yeah, to go? We, we actually get a lot of um, stock plastic trays with very that tall just... sidewalls. And you just take a round burr, take, a, take an <clears throat> acrylic burr, just, you know, punch through, you know, just punch through where the pin is going to stick up through. And yeah, those, those work fine. But there's um, not none that are pre-made that you can buy them that way, no? No, I, I've not, not a big use for it. I haven't, uh, you know, I haven't seen, I haven't, I haven't seen one that'll come with the holes pre-drilled okay. for you. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's easy enough to do, you know, and we do them here. We make custom trays for your customers every day yep. um, and we'll pre-drill the holes for you, but that requires a, a pre-operative cast and, you know, at least, you know, uh, where the healing caps are in place. What about with, I hear when I have issues, when they usually get to me in my desk, it's, it's a lot of times is the collar height. And I know with a digitally, we just have space. And now I think we have it to where we can digitally put in a tissue area there. But more and more I hear it when a doctor's not telling you, okay, let's go Supra, you know, uh, half a millimeter Supra from the tissue, or let's go sub a millimeter, two millimeters. But we kind of got a hard tissue on a stone model. Mm -hmm. We do soft tissue models. But a lot of times, um, you know, so, and you know, when a, a patient's an upper, you know, you're not usually lifting your lips up to to show your single, you know, your gingival mm -hmm. third. A lot mm -hmm. of ninety, I don't know how many. Right. A lot of people don't show that, but yet, and that's where a lot of guys in conventional fixed will keep it just at the tissue. Okay, mm -hmm. even a little super. A lot of old guys, you know, the struts and everything mm -hmm. else with the feldspathics. Remember, everything yeah. was supra, yeah. and it's just right there to the enamel, and it's just you're never gonna see. But some people have, like my wife, she smiles, and you get gum, mm -hmm. you know, gums, and you get all smile. Me, yep. a lot of guys, you don't see, and especially the lowers, you're not right. gonna be able to pull your lowers right. back. But more and more, I'm getting, you know thing was four millimeters below the tissue and it's like you know I don't like you know uh, you get your attachment down there and tissue and everything else and just everyone always says you know a lot of guys say when it comes to setting your margin when we're doing PFMs I, I like going sub myself and buried in there but you know it'd be nice to have a nice sloping chamfer or shoulder mm -hmm. you don't want to have some shoulder bevel because then I'm coming with metal, right. I'm coming with opaque, I'm coming with porcelain, and by the time you get down to that tissue, you're blanching that tissue. Right. It's just that emergence profile. profile is too thick, on and on. Well, 
on the other way, what's the best way to really know, like you said, we have to, doctor should index where it's at, this and there to help us there. But what about when it comes to tissue? Because should everything be a soft tissue totally? Or when it's coming to, you know, a digital type model where the last few I've seen, they have a little insert now. Yep. That's yep. kind of bitching. But then again, that's a guesstimation too, because that's hard. And then if you're going a little bit sub, I mean, where, where does that collar go? Where should it go? And do you see problems with that coming into us? Absolutely, yeah. I mean, cement sepsis, cement contamination, and, and loss of bone, um, you know, around the fixtures is pretty well documented that, you know, cement left in the sulcus on cement retained restorations is a big problem. Yeah. Um, more of your customers are going screw retained. Um, the screw retained Bruxer that we talked about, screw retained Emax, screw retained PFM are all very predictable um, solutions to overcome this problem. Um, you know, we, we, we do, even this day, <laughs> we do an awful lot of cast uh, UCLA based restorations for single unit crowns. And that's and because we want to bring it where we want it? Well, we, no? Yeah, we can control, we can control margin depth, but we're also making it essentially, it's, it's a one piece design, it's no cement. There's, there's no cement anywhere in it. You know, we're, that's we're where casting, we're cementing ourselves here? Or? No, we're casting, we're casting a UCLA golden plastic abutment for a crown. We're waxing up, uh, your waxers are waxing up and giving the ceramics the proper support and then the ceramist is applying porcelain um, directly to the metal. So there's, there's, there's no cement, there's never any cement that's gonna come in contact with the patient. Um, it's a PFM restoration. Okay. And, and those sell for the, the high fours to the mid fives, you know, because it's an expensive part from the manufacturer and it and consumes something is that like, like uh, Atlantis type of abutment? We, no? can, we can do that with Atlantis also. Um, but we will then construct a PFM coping and your ceramics will apply porcelain to that. And then after it's been uh, final QC, uh, your two implant waxers, one of the two will um, loot the two pieces together. And it's a screw retained PFM um, on an Atlantis above. Have we, do we get many of the interfaces that we're looting together? Come apart or no? No, we're 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 trying to avoid that whenever possible. Um, what are we looting with? We use Ivoclar's multi-link implant sim. That's one of the best that's that's on the market. Um, it's you know a very trusted brand here in the United States. Ivoclar is, you know, really the pioneer when it comes to all ceramic materials in this country. They are the bomb. Yeah. Well, good job. What else uh, for a doctor doing implants starting off? What other recommendations, not even just using our lab, but what could you give, because that's what we're here doing. We're mm -hmm. trying to give advice to doctors to help them practice better dentistry, easier dentistry, more predictable dentistry. What else could you throw at them for implants? What you should, what you shouldn't do, what you should get, what you shouldn't get? You know, it's, it's really, it's planning and communication. That's number one and number two is, you know, um, we get a lot of cases and, and, and we hear a lot of, uh, times on the phone where, you know, the patient just returned from the surgeon and now I've got to restore it and now what do I do? And those are hard things to manage because really the fixture's already been placed. And if it's at an off angle or if it's too deep or if it's super gingival, you've got a lot of obstacles then you have to overcome uh, at the restoration level, at the abutment or the restoration level. And sometimes you cannot undo these problems of surgery. And, and I would say that you know, more planning, the better. It kind of goes back to, you know, what, what surgeons in hospitals and, and even carpenters, you know, you measure twice and you cut once, yeah. you know, and the more you can plan, the better off you'll be in the final restoration. And number two is understanding, you know, some of the design limitations, understanding some of the limitations that your patient already has. Um, and you're going to ask the restoration. And, you know, the, the biggest one we get is closing gingival embrasures. Well, a lot of times, you know, when you've got an edential space and you've got the two teeth adjacent to it, well, they're going to tip and they're going to close the space a little. Well, that creates an anatomic undercut on both sides of the restoration we're going to make. It's not an undercut in our restoration. It's an undercut in the adjacent teeth. Yeah. Um, some of our some of our uh, high volume implant customers are advising their patients, hey, I'm gonna need to add a little composite. I might need to do an MO and a DO adjacent. I might need to fill in this space. Or if the space is closed too much, um, 
I'm going to need to do a little bit of enamelplasty and smooth out your adjacent teeth to, so that the laboratory can then create a restoration with a longer, broader contact area to help prevent the food from you know, packing in there. And these are just you know, some little things to watch for because you know, I've, I've unfortunately heard it from you know, my father who has to restore the implants and you know, oh, you know, Mr. Jones is back and you know, he's, he's complaining of packing food on the mesial surface of number 30. It was an implant crown you guys did three years ago. Okay, Dad, well, you know what? Hey, this is our crown, and this is, you know, the distal surface in number 29. See that anatomic undercut? We can eliminate that, and, and you can, you know, help Mr. Jones out here, but it's going to require, you know, a, a modification on the restoration that's on the tooth in front of it. And, you know, if, if a little bit of communication with the patient, I can make you a crown, the laboratory can make a great crown, but uh, in order to help prevent food impacting there and tend to close this gingival embrasure space properly, we're going to need another restoration or we're going to need a modification of the restoration that's already on the, the tooth in front Isn't of Isn't there some sculpting of the tissue? Because I know you got an implant here and then you got this big space and we can only come up from the margin here and then you got to go over. Yeah. It's hard, but if we trough that tissue there, yep. we can jet out there, but a doctor doesn't really go in and... You, you know, in, in, the an, in the anterior, um, you, utilizing custom healing caps to really get the tissue where you want it to be, it, you're setting up an ideal emergence profile in the abutment and restoration that we're gonna make next. Um, it, it takes a couple months. Yeah, and, it really does. You know, but it's, it's really worth it, particularly if you have a single anterior tooth. Um, With a high smile line that yeah, you're seeing. Because yeah. that's our biggest thing is we call them black triangles and it's in your mouth. And when you got a high smile line and you look through and you don't have your embrasures closed all the way, they're black triangles. They look, there's that space, but it just looks like it looks, looks terrible on your teeth when you're looking through. It just looks like black holes, kind of. Mm -hmm. And it just doesn't look natural. And a lot of times a doctor will say, well, when your spit or your saliva <laughs> fills in a lot of naturally triangles that you have, you can, you can kind of fill it in when you're doing pictures. But other than that, it's just gingival recession, yeah. a lot of it. And you got those black triangles. And that's the dreaded thing as a ceramist that I don't want to see any black triangles. But when it's coming to implants and you got these rods here and we're trying to close everything up with a nice contour coming out of tissue, it's hard because you got to jet it all the way over. And it, there's a lot of talent to it. There's yeah. a lot of talent to it. But a lot of times, too, it's the dentist not really thinking it out mm -hmm. with the oral surgeon or whoever's placing it. And that's why... I know my brother's an my brother's an endodontist, so he does his little meetings with his, you know, the GPs mm -hmm. and stuff in town. And I think it's good that you keep that relationship and you try to, like, if I wasn't sinking my implants and I was doing a lot of implants and having an oral surgeon do them or a periodontist doing them for me, I would probably get on that guy's good side, especially if you're not really getting stuff back that you need the way you need it. Now, wouldn't it be good for the general dentist to be doing, if that, say, that periodontist or oral surgeon isn't doing pantographs and all, well, he's got to be doing the mm -hmm. sink in these implants, yeah. but wouldn't these customs, you know, stents be good for us or, yeah. you know, or guides for the dentist to give to the surgeon or no? Abs I mean, absolutely, um, yeah, we, we do a lot of, we do a lot of surgical stents where we're going to wax up the restoration ideally, to, ideally to based, based on the adjacent teeth. And, you know, we'll make you a stone model. We'll make you a suck down. Um, we'll even make, you know, a little, a little flipper if you want for your patient. But, you know, having the surgeon understand what the final restoration needs to look like yeah. is a huge benefit. And, yeah, it's a little bit more money, but I, I honestly believe that if... If the surgeon has a better idea of what comes next, and if the restorative doctor has a better idea of what the surgeon needs to put the fixture in the correct position, your patient's gonna benefit. Oh yeah, and I'm sure there's hot shot surgeons out there that really don't need that little Nesbit type flipper in mm -hmm. there to show them, because mm -hmm. you got your x-ray, you got your pano, and you're looking at it, but I just think 
a really hot, a great dentist that's doing these that wants more consistency and more, you know, to be able to really say mm -hmm. where this teeth's going to be, to kind of give that to the mm -hmm. oral surgeon saying, hey, I got Mrs. Jones, we're doing number 30. Here, we already did this stent and a little Nesbitt for you to go to put in the mouth. Right. You can go off of, you know, correlate it off of your pano and go ahead and have it to be, you know what? This is good. Thank you, doctor, for bringing yeah. this to me. He's going to love that, Dennis, Absolutely. for giving it, making yeah. his job easier. Because yeah. the times we're seeing this, 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 this with these implants, it's probably a guy trying to say, well, I got freaking bone here only. Yeah. I got to go. Yeah. Kind of, you know, I just think if you really work with your lab that does a lot of implants and then you work with your surgeon, if you're not doing it, to come up with the best solution to give you mm -hmm. the best results instead of coming in at the end of it all going, well, what are we going to do now to salvage it? Yeah. And we do too uh, much salvage work where think about it at the beginning, <laughs> try to use the tools that you can to make it predictably accurate, and it might cost $100, $200 more for you know a little Nesbitt type partial flipper and you know a stent for you, but a surgical stent. But I think that's probably the wise way to go. Absolutely, know. it's it's much better than having Mr. Jones, you know, show up in your office every two weeks complaining about the restoration. Yeah. you know, and it's it's you know a little bit more on the front end really does pay off on the back end. Absolutely, and I got guys that God, I would rather have done three regular crown preps and instead of one implant because yeah. i know this is going to go in they're going to be fine it's not going to be a headache where there's one implant i'm i've seen this page for six months yeah and it shouldn't be it should yeah. be boom 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 and it does happen well bob thank Thanks, you so Drew. much thank really you very appreciate much. it it's short and sweet but i think uh if you guys can get anything out of it you know do what you can just to be make it more predictable, and I think uh, your implants will go a lot smoother. It'll go smoother for us, and that's what we want here. We want we want to get some good work in here so we can show what we do instead of just trying to be reactive on you know stuff that we're getting. We like to be proactive and just kind of do things right the first way. But um, I want to thank you all for this week's uh, you know. Uh, coming and listening to our podcast here at Keating Dental Arts. If you want to get anything on for promos, just go to KeatonDentalArts.com slash promos. And then also for our Dental Up podcast, you can just go to Keating Dental Arts, same thing, slash podcasts, and you should be able to pull these up. But again, if you have any uh, ideas or topics you want us to talk about, it, please let us know. Come on our Facebook page, Keating Dental Arts uh, Facebook page, and like us, whatever that means. You gotta, I guess you push on it. <laughs> Give us a lot of likes. I, I don't know why we need them, but I guess we need it for content. But um, again, I want to thank you all for uh, listening in. And um, again, thank you very much. Have a great day.